Welcome to the Law School Insider, where we have conversations with students, lawyers, and employers. Succeeding in law school is something that you must prepare for, not only before you begin, but throughout your law school journey, and that's what this podcast is all about. I am your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis, and I will draw from my over 20 years of experience in the college admission field, as well as bring forth the experiences of others as we delve deeper into the issues. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Law School Insider. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis, and I'm so excited to be able to have you back again this week. This week, I'm excited to be able to bring you a brand new guest, Bryant Donovan, who is a lawyer down in Florida with the law offices of Michael Owen. And he works in the area of real estate law. We're going to be talking a little bit about that, as well as the journey that he went on to be able to find success and have him share some of his successes with you. Thanks so much for being on the show with us this week, Bryant. No problem. Thanks for having me. Well, we appreciate you being here today, and I want to thank you for sharing your journey with us. To start today, I want to go back in time and reel back the wheel and talk to you a little bit about the journey that you went on to find the passion for the law, as well as to find that the law was right for you. What was it about the law that really stood out for you and made you want to jump into this profession? Well, basically, I wasn't one of those children who growing up wanted to be a lawyer or anything like that. I I wanted to play music. So I did that when I was an undergrad. I have a bachelor's degree in philosophy. So I I kind of picked whatever I thought would just kind of take care of the idea of getting a degree and also something I enjoyed doing. However, I didn't think it through to the extent that when you have a degree in philosophy, you can either teach or go into the law. It's a very finite pool of occupation patients that that's actually a good degree for. So pretty late into getting my degree, I realized I don't want to teach. I don't want to spend the entirety of my life in academia. So at that point, law school kind of became a just a default option. I think at the time, I had a relatively small program in my school. So most of them, I think seven of nine, either wanted to go to law school or they wanted to go into like the seminary and theology type stuff. So that's really what drew me to it. It was a kind of a decision of necessity because I didn't want to teach and I wasn't going to be a rock star by any means. Going through law school, did you find that there were specific things that were your biggest takeaways, some of the things that may have challenged you the most or things that you had to work the hardest on to be able to find success as you were going through that law school journey for yourself? I think constructing arguments, that concept, we had a pretty analytical type base in in our knowledge. It wasn't necessarily what is a table and you describe it in in different modes and philosophical ideas. We came from a very logic-oriented program where we're learning about modus ponens and ideas and rules of logic. So you can construct arguments and see kind of where they're going to end up and apply those rules to basically shape what you're arguing. So I I think that helped just seeing the flow of an argument. You want to go to a conclusion of, you know, in a crim pro class, for example, getting someone either acquitted or or found not guilty. That's your conclusion. And you want to use logic to get there because I always thought a more reasoned argument would help eventually a more reasonable judge. So that's kind of where I came from with it. And that part of my philosophy degree really helped me in law school, I think. Um, A hindrance to that, obviously, is philosophy is a very airy kind of language. You're you're able to pontificate on whatever aspect of a a question you really want to. There's no real right or wrong answer. There's no, you know, absolute right idea. So that kind of hindered it, whereas in, in law, there are right and wrong answers. Negligence has four elements, then you can't make one up. So that aspect kind of hindered me from that previous training. It took some time to to actually break that mold. It was a gift and a curse. Now, you were talking about the changes that you had to make in writing and the importance of writing. Now, in the journey that you have gone on, that you went on in law school, what were some of the things that you had to do to be able to become that stronger writer? But also, what were some of the things that were the biggest takeaways, let's say, for you in crafting your own writing skills? When you're 
going from almost a system where you, you have all this time to, to write out long, lengthy answers and, and you can use more dense language, airy language, to turn that into a more technical writing that takes some tweaking. It wasn't something that came really easy for me because I'd literally gone from two years of choose your own adventure to get to where you're going to end up with your conclusion to this regimented, you know, as you state the issue first, go through the, the rule and analyze it to your facts and then state your conclusion. That concept was very foreign to me. So that's really what the, the hard part was. It wasn't about retaining the information or being able to memorize large quantities of that. That part came easy because that's just an extension of what I had done previously. But the writing style and how you persuade a professor and, and then later persuade a judge, it's very different because they read hundreds of test papers or they may read hundreds of motions. So you, you want to cut through as much as you can and stick with that. Here's the issue. Here's the rule. And this is why we're going to get to ultimately the conclusion I want. So that's the biggest change I had. And what, what helped with it, it was really, you know, I, I thought I did great on all, all my exams. Well, when I, I realized I didn't do so hot when I got the, the grades back, meeting with my professors really helped. Like I said, it wasn't not knowing what the law was and all of that. It was literally tailoring the writing to that more technical type of capacity. Now, I'm sure that going into real estate law is not the same place that you thought that you were going to start in your professional career or end in your professional career. And for many law students, that is the case. So what was it about real estate law that piqued your interest, that drew you in and now sustains you in the practice that you do on a daily basis? From day one, I thought I'd be doing some variation of criminal type work, whether it's prosecution, appeals, or even the defense side. One of those three things that I thought that's where I'd end up, given generally they're government-based jobs when you're starting out. I figured the pool to the entry would be a little easier there after law school. So that's what I really focused on. I took a lot of appellate writing classes and bulked up on as much of like the criminal procedure, practical mood court type classes and, and cr the trial skills type things, just because I knew I wanted to be in court. I didn't want to be a transactional or a research attorney. So the whole time I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to work in the criminal field. I don't really need to focus on you know how, how to get clients. I didn't take, I don't think, any of the client consultation type, type classes. I just focused literally on, on criminal law and whatever else was required to get my JD. So when it came time to applying for internships, I think I applied to eight different variations of the same type of work. U.S. Attorney's Office, prosecution offices with various counties throughout Florida, um, some public defender offices. And then there were I needed to kind of be more versatile, I thought. So I think two of the 10 or 15 places I applied were actually private practices, small law firm, because I figured eventually there may be, you know, I may want to see what private practice looked like. I was still in school when I was trying to pick my externship. So I didn't have that necessity of, okay, I need to take this externship, turn it into a job and, and advance through a career, it was, okay, I've done all this preparation. What am I going to do if I don't like it? So I wanted to really have different options available. And, and from there, I mean, I, I, I moved from, I was going to school in Lansing, Michigan, moved down to the Tampa area in Florida and started a, a small firm. They did a lot of foreclosure defense, which I really wasn't interested in. I didn't honestly see that there were defenses to, to that type of law or anything like that. But as I got more involved into it, and realize that literally being on the defense side, you're fighting a, a corporation or a national association that has virtually unlimited resources to fight you back with. That really became kind of appealing to me. So from there, that's when it became, you know, maybe it's not all about the criminal world. Maybe I can do something a little bit more civil minded and, and still get that same kind of gratification out of it. If someone was truly interested in the area of real estate law, is there Anything that they can be doing in law school to prepare themselves better, to find success specifically in this niche career area? Most of it comes down to exposing themselves to those subject areas, really. it's. I think I had taken maybe one real estate class in law school. I took sales, which is Article 3 of the UCC. I took that. So I had kind of a foundational understanding of, of this is what I'm going to need for, for the tools on, on this practice area. 
But being more exposed to it, I think I would have realized earlier that I liked it and would have kind of explored it more when it came to externships or, or networking events and really trying to learn from other attorneys to how you could really get that grasp that you're looking for as a student. I always recommend to, to students or potential students is try to get as much experience as you can. If you think you're interested in something, just try it. You can always drop a class and that way you can either cross it off the list or keep it on there for future career goals or just interest areas. And if they are current students, definitely take advantage of externships. That's the key you want when it's not your license, when you're not the one who's held to the ethical responsibilities of you know competently representing a, a client, you want to be able to, to learn about things and not have that pressure of not only do I have to learn it, I have to do it right. Just learn it and see, see if you're comfortable even calling that a career. When you think back to your own law school career, are there certain things that you wish that you would have done or would have worked worked on to be able to find better opportunities for you to find success earlier in your career? And if so, what were they? And what would you have changed if there had been any? You can network with your, your fellow students, but understanding how that concept works and, and how it works for you, that was something I, I, I really had to learn kind of quickly when I started in private practice. So if you have you know, networking groups or public speaking like Toastmasters, the access to those types of things, try them. It's not something that a law school can really teach you how to do. Go mingle with other attorneys and make relationships outside of just the law. But those relationships pay dividends for me on a daily basis. So That's great advice. Now, if someone wants to network more than just Toastmasters, are there certain other ways or things that you did to be able to establish yourself in your own career? I did a lot of internet marketing and, and things like that when I was going through law school. So I took that knowledge really quick. After I got my bar card and uh, I was officially an attorney. I, I, my first thing was to build like a web presence so people in the local area can find me. And I literally just talked to as many people as I could. That's how I built the, the trust in a neighborhood. But in terms of that networking, I joined, it's it's called BNI, Business Networking International. The firm I, I joined, I was a clerk and then became an associate at, they were very big on it. And, and it did a lot of good things for that firm. And we've continued it. I'm still a member of, of that type of networking group where I'm able to be in a room filled with 50, 60 people that all have an interest in helping me share my business and helping me reach as many people as I can. And I think that it's a key because there's more experienced business people out there than me. There's more experienced marketers out there that you can always learn from. And having those relationships, it's it's invaluable. When you're thinking about doing a press release, if some good news comes your way, well, then at that point, you have people you can reach to rather than making all the mistakes on your own. You, you can kind of pick from the pool. Well, I appreciate you sharing this and all of the great information today. If someone wants to reach out to you to get more information about what you are doing and connect with you further, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, I'm in court a lot. So Hillsborough County, Florida, if you, you may see me in a courtroom or online, we have a, a very large web presence. It's the law office of Michael Owen, mjolegal.com. That's where we share our blogs. I'm a pretty big blogger trying to share not necessarily, you know, tips and, and tools of the trade, but trying to keep people informed. There's a, a big disconnect, I, I think, with the legal community and how it can help consumers and things like that. So that's what we try to do through our web presence is educate. We will put those links in our notes today. And Bryant, thanks so much again for being with us. And we look forward to hearing more about your success in the future. No problem. Good luck, everyone. Well, that was another great guest this week on the Law School Insider. If you have an interest in being a guest on the show, drop me an email at lawschoolinsider at cooley, C-O-O-L-E-Y dot E-D-U. And thank you all for listening today. And remember, you have the ability and right to take control of your law school's success. I hope you'll continue listening, creating a plan for success that will prepare you to achieve the dreams that you have set for yourself. Talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. You're on your way to being a law school insider. Please subscribe to stay connected and come back again next time as we speak to more students, lawyers, and employers. Mm-hmm.